Uh, this is a tutorial about uh, how to use the lighting effects filter. This is a filter that I use quite often on my manipulations especially. And in Photoshop CS6 they really changed it, they changed it a lot actually. And while well, I just want to show you how I use this filter. So the lighting effects filter is located under the filter menu and you will find the render sub menu and right here you'll find the lighting effects filter. Some people told me that they have it grayed out and that is not available for them to select and that might be because you, cho you chose some weird mode here. Make sure you're on RGB and 8 bits uh, mode because I don't know on 16 bits I don't know if this uh, filter if this plugin works and I don't know if any of the other modes here support the lighting effects filter so make sure you're on, you're on RGB and 8 bits and that might solve the problem that you have. Also keep in mind that this is a destructive filter. So if I if I were to apply the filter on the image right now, it would be applied to the image and I cannot undo that. Um, well, I cannot change the settings, I can undo and reapply the filter, but that's not really practical. So if your Photoshop version allow you to create smart objects, just uh, right click on the layer and choose create convert to smart object. And that way when you apply the filter, it will turn that filter into a smart filter and that way you will be able to edit the settings whenever you want and you can also delete it if you don't if you don't need it and if you cannot create smart objects simply duplicate the layer and you'll have a backup so let's go to filter render and choose lighting effects and this is the big change you can see that um, now the preview is on is on the whole window on previous versions of Photoshop you had like a really small window with a thumbnail as a preview which was really uncomfortable to work with and now we have the, the entire canvas as a preview and you can zoom in and out, you can move the image so you can really focus on the area that uh, you, you, you're interested in. The controls are now set on the right side, uh, you can see this panel here which you can uh, add it just like any other panel in Photoshop, so let's leave it there. And you have all the controls here and on the bottom we have this uh, layers palette where you can see all the lights that you have on on your scene on the top left we have the light type so from here we can add all the lights that we want and you have a few presets here i'll show you some of them i never use them but uh, here they are so well let's uh, start from the from the center here this is the preview this is my scene and by default i have this uh, single spotlight just like in previous versions of Photoshop you have a default spotlight and uh, the difference now is that you have this uh, inner circle which is called the hotspot I don't know in other ver in Photoshop CS5 and previous I, it, I, I don't know the name uh, it was called something else but and I don't know if they if you had if you had the representation of that hotspot one other thing uh, what happened to me the first day I used uh, Photoshop when I uh, access this filter I noticed that the lines were were not were not there and I could move the light but I couldn't see the lines and I, I thought there was something wrong with the program and the only thing you have to do is press control or command H and you will see the lines just like that or if you go to filter to view and choose extras and you will uh, you will enable them it's just like hiding the the guides uh, if you want to hide the guides or selections if you press Ctrl H you can hide them. So while this is our default uh, hotspot, if you click on one of these points you can make it bigger and you can make it round or you can squeeze it. And uh, as I said with the with the with the hotspot here, uh, you can you can make the lights uh, uh, smaller or bigger. The hotspot uh, is simply the center uh, where the light is focused, and from here on the light starts to fade out. That's what the hotspot does. And I'll zoom out. Uh, one thing that I noticed is that I cannot zoom uh, using the pen, using the tablet. I don't know why, so I have to do it with the mouse. So I can zoom out and make the slides really big. Let's assume I want to have a spot of light right here on the stairs. I can make the light bigger and then squeeze it, like so, and turn it around. Have something like that. Make the hotspot a bit bigger and move the light. If you click on this middle point you can move the light around and this here is the intensity. You can increase the intensity from here but uh, I almost always use this uh, slider. You also have a color here which uh, was available on on previous versions of Photoshop so you can give a color to your light. Uh, usually really really small changes in color are needed because otherwise you have really 
crazy colors here which uh, sometimes you don't need but uh, here you have let's let's leave it on white actually because you've seen how it works and yeah, let me zoom in just a bit it's really hard to, to zoom in with this uh, magic mouse that Apple has I, I can control it really well but also notice that we have the colorize option so if I change this for example to red I can, uh, if, if I change the exposure, nothing happens. The, the exposure is simply the exposure of the light. It does not control. It has nothing to do with the color, but this colorize option works with the ambience slider. So if I increase the ambience, you will see that this, the image starts to become uh, red. And let's change this to blue because I want to show you something else. And I'll increase the hotspot. Let me just drag this down a bit because I want to see the, the whole list of settings here. I'll use the mouse because with the pen. I suck at making precise selections with it. So we have the color of the of the light here, of the ambience. Uh, let me make the hotspot a bit bigger. And I can change the light and the color of the light to, for example, yellow. And you can see that now something happened here. The color of the of the light is yellow, which is focused right here. If I increase the intensity, it starts to become even more yellow. But uh, you can see that it only affects the hotspot, so to say. And from here on, it starts to fade out. And uh, it starts uh, right here, it's cold because this is the ambient. And uh, so if you have like a, a night scene, you can use a really dark, uh, a really dark color like so, a really dark blue because it's night. And then you can have the light uh, uh, really yellow and you could put uh, this if, if you have like a street lamp or something like that you can you can mimic this uh, kind of effect here to have the light uh, the color of the light on the center and then fade out until it uh, it reaches the ambient light and well let's see another type of light that we have uh, i'll add for example an, a point light uh, i'll deactivate the spotlight and you can see that i have the same colors here i'll reset them and I'll try to reset this light. It's not going to, to do the work, so I'll make it manually. Okay, so uh, the point light is simply, uh, you cannot change anything for, you cannot change the direction, you cannot change anything. It's simply a point of light and you can put it wherever you want and just have the same settings as for the other one. You can only place it uh, uh, on wherever you want actually, but uh, you cannot change uh, the direction you, you cannot change the size. Uh, well, actually, you can change the size. I can, as I can see, I didn't know that. Um, so, well, you can change the size and put it wherever you want, and you have the same controls here. You can change the the colorize option and make it uh, on a certain color, and then uh, just uh, change uh, the color of the light itself. Let's hide that and add another light, which is called an infinite light. This is new. Uh, you can change this, the, um, the direction of this one. Let me set, reset the colors. You can change the direction of the of the infinite light. So you can move it uh, wherever you want. But I, I don't know, I don't find this uh, really useful. So you, you can have this uh, infinite light. I, I think it works with the 3D objects. Maybe it casts shadows, I didn't try it. But anyways, here you have it. Uh, you can try that for yourself. You can have a 3D object and then uh, just uh, play with the light and see what happens. And let's see some of the presets that we have here. Um, it's just uh, using the same lights here, but just uh, with different settings. You, you might find some of them uh, useful. These are these are useful for walls, for example, to create light effects. Um, this one as well, so you can see you can create all sorts of uh, of effects. Crossing, I don't really like this triple spotlight, uh, just like on a stage or something. So well, you can try uh, the presets here and uh, just play around with this filter. You will notice that on my tutorials, I use this quite a lot on my final effects to, sign, to center the light. And well, that's, that's how I use this uh, filter. So well, I hope you liked uh, this tutorial. Thank you for watching and see you next time.